I talk about the mindset a lot, right? It's the growth mindset versus the fixed mindset. Okay, as you know, the fixed mindset is result oriented and the growth mindset is process oriented. So people who grow and are successful are usually have a growth mindset. You work with hundreds and hundreds of agents and you have your own kids. For example, you're like your kids are not going to go through that experience. So how do you teach them when they might, they're not going to go through these same experiences, but there's lessons that they need to learn in their own life to become better? Love that question. Every time I tell my story, there's always a tie to it, right? And my tie to it is I want to share my story with you to tell you that all the thing I learned and who I am today because of things I went through it. But you don't have to go through it. Just learn from my experience. So with that being said, I talk about the mindset a lot, right? It's the growth mindset versus the fixed mindset. Okay? As you know, the fixed mindset is result-oriented, and the growth mindset is process-oriented. So people who grow and are successful are usually have a growth mindset. Yes, I'm very competitive, so result is important. Okay, if, if I'm golfing, I want a low score, you know. If I'm playing a card game, I want to win. If I'm growing a company, I want to beat my competitor, right? I mean, it is what it is. But at the same time, I don't get disappointed when I don't achieve those results. I want to learn from them. Here's an example I share many times already. Doing my mortgage today, I, I remember I just got out of the banking business because I started on the banking side and went to the mortgage side. And I, I answered an ad uh, for a mortgage broker that said, hey, we have leads. I was in my early 20s. Right? I'm like, okay, I can use some leads. You know, I, mean, I need some leads to call on. I don't have the SOI, the sphere of influence that somebody else who's been in the industry for a long time have. So I show up to this company, and I remember the first day, I'm, I'm ready. And then you may not be old enough, but back then we used to have to pound our phone. You have this phone on our desk, right? We didn't have cell phone yet. <laughs> you have to do not disturb so you can make the call, you, you know, you prospect. So I remember I'm ready. And I asked my manager at the time, I said, hey, I'm ready for my leads. And uh, I remember uh, the smirk on his face, Sean. He said, okay, here are your leads. He reached down and grabbed the white pages and he gave it to me. He said, start with A's and don't leave a voicemail. That was my training, right? Here's the phone book and start with A's and don't leave a voicemail. So here I am. I'm, I'm making calls. I'm making, I'm dialing, dialing, dialing. And you know, back then people were working. You know, they might not be picking up. And every time a voicemail kick in, I would hang up because he said, don't leave a voicemail. So Andrew has a dialing, dialing, maybe 50 calls into it. I was getting pretty good at just pounding the number, right? Just, just go down the list. And right before I thought that voicemail was going to kick in, I was about to hang up and go to the next one. Somebody answered the phone in the line. Hello. So I'm picturing an old lady in her walker walking to her phone that's hanging on the kitchen, <laughs> right? To catch it before the voicemail kick in because she wants to talk to somebody. She's lonely. So because she picked up the phone, I didn't know what to do because I wasn't prepared. I'm like, oh, sh I hung up on her. But my growth mindset is thinking, dang it. What do I say next time when someone pick up the phone? That's how I think, right? Next time someone pick up the phone, I'm gonna say this. I'm dialing, dialing about 40, 50 calls again. Someone pick up the phone. A man this time. Hello? Look his name. Hi, John. This is Long with New Century Mortgage. Would you like a mortgage? He said, no. I'm like, thank you. I hung up. <laughs> then I go, dang it, I should have talked more. But I'm gonna take him out. So I kept learning, learning, learning. That's my growth mindset. Eventually, I, I became the next branch manager at the next office they opened up, okay? So the point I try to share with people is no matter what happened to you, you can't control it, but learn from it and grow from it. So for me, I share that growth is internal. It's within you first. So don't ever compare yourself to somebody else because I don't care whatever it is. It can be golf. It can be soccer. It can be business. There's always someone better than you, and there's always someone worse than you. Well, that is the definition of average, the best of the worst and the worst of the best, right? So if you always compare yourself to somebody, you're going to be disappointed. You have, you feel inefficient, you feel inadequate, right? You feel like you fail because there's always someone better than you, especially today with social media. All you see is people bragging or happy about something great that happened to them, right? So, uh, so, so that's one thing that I share with people. Uh, the other thing too, I, I, I said about just reflecting, just be the better person yourself. So like, because of that, I go into habits and that's the next thing I usually talk to people, right? We are our habits. My habits of reorganizing things and doing things a certain way made me who I am, right? Because that's how I see everything. It's all a mess. It's like a puzzle. But how do I put all the pieces together and see what I want to see, right? So we are a habit. If you don't like how, who you are, what's going on, you change your habit, okay? So for me, the night before I go to bed, I reflect. Okay, that's how I learn, right? I want to know, did I grow today? So I will look at my calendar, Andrew, everything including our meeting today, I'm going to go, okay, could I have done that better? Maybe I would have said, oh, he asked that, but I actually answered a different question. I should have 
answer differently. <laughs> I will think through my entire day and I will reflect. Okay, and then I also fi- find out did I learn something new today? Usually when I go to a conference, I'm gonna learn something new, right? I go to a mastermind event, I, I meet somebody for the very first time. So I'm like, oh yeah, I learned that today. Then I'm a better man today. I hate to read, by the way. I have three books on next to my bed. I will read 15 minutes every night that I didn't learn something today because I have to be honest with myself because I need to be a better person, right, than the day before. So then I look at my next day to see what on my calendar so I can plan my next day out. That's my habit, including if it's a Zoom today, all right, what am I, what are we going to talk about? If it's an in-person meeting, I had one today before you, all right, I got to actually see what pants I put on, right, because people are going to, I actually get to go out in person versus just my top half up, you know, and where am I driving to? How long is it going to take me to get there? Uh, how's what the weather going to look like? I am fashionably challenged, colorblindness, but my wife thinks it's fashionably challenged. So I never know what clothes to wear, so I plan them out in, in, uh, in combination that my wife has already approved them. So this shirt, I usually go with one or two pants. That way I don't have to sit around and make sure I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not dressed correctly, right? Many times I walk down to the stairs, trying something new, she'll shake her head. I know I got to go back up and go back to one outfit that's been approved already. So, you know, but that's the habit. And that's what I'm trying to get to is that the growth mindset and the habit, right? Those are the two things I talk the most about. And then after that, it's about the system process and time management. Yeah, so for, I love that because, like, I started implementing, like, I have a type form that I made for, like, weekly, daily, quarterly kind of, like, reflection. And then I have learned the importance of, like, habits and growth mindset, but I know that's come out of some fortunate circumstances of getting in sales early. I've made 200 plus phone calls back before there were dialers <laughs> in a single day. I know it is very easy to get in this rut where you're like, you feel like this victim and like you can spiral downwards and you know you should make a change. You know there's habits you need to change. You like, you know the things that you're doing wrong. And I feel like, especially like in real estate, which such a high failure rate and you have to be self-motivated, you have to be disciplined. How do you make that switch? I love that question. I would tell you right now, if you look up some stats, especially around the new year, right? Because the new year resolution, 92% of people fail to never achieve their goals because they don't execute, right? Because they, they, want, they set a goal, they want to do it, but they don't execute It's because either they can't or they don't know how, right? Or it just seems so monumental, like such a big goal, I can never get there, right? So because of that, habits is how you change that. You can go back and break it down. Okay, we call reverse engineer. If this is your goal, reverse engineer back all the steps you need to do to get there and start doing those steps one at a time. So here's an example, a a story I've shared many times already. So uh, we we do company trip at Realty Group, you know. Um, We take the top producer, we go somewhere. For me, uh, I I double dip on this. It's also my family uh, vacation, right? Because we're in Minnesota, so we go somewhere in the winter. And it was a few years back, my kids were younger. Now they're 20, 23, and 26. So my daughter's the youngest and my two boys. So my two boys back at the time were 13 and 16. So we're going to Mexico. And of course, their boys, they're like, hey, dad, before we go, we got to go to the gym. We got to get in good shape. We got to look good for the chicks, right? So I'm telling them, I'm bringing mom. So it's like bringing sand to the beach. So it doesn't matter how I look, right? But I, I'll go with you guys. But I'm going to tell you this. Give me five days. They're like, what are you talking about? You'll see, okay? So first day, I broke down to go to the gym because that's what I want to do, right? My goal is to go to the gym with my, my son. I broke down all the things I need to do to go to the gym. And then I create those small steps. So day one, I put my gym clothes on and then I walked them out to the door and said, okay, see you guys at the gym. Go ahead, have a good workout. What do you, what do you mean, Dad? This is my step one. I'll teach you after I'm done. I put my gym clothes on, okay? Day two, same thing. Go to the gym. I got my gym clothes on. I actually put my shoes on this time. I went out. I sat in the car. I said, you guys drive yourself there. I'll, I'll catch you next time. Dad, you're weird. I don't know what's going on here. Day three, I drove them to the gym. I dropped them off. I was out in the parking lot. Day four, I put them to the gym. I walked in with them, and I walked around the gym, and I see you later. I'll come back, pick you up. Day five, I went to the gym, and I start my workout. Again. If you take small steps that's achievable and you do them, eventually you can create new habits, right? You can't create them if you don't do them smaller, baby step, right? You can't, you can't eat one bite, right? 
So that's how you can change your habit and, and stick to it. Make them so small that you can win, because you gotta learn to win. Once you start winning, you start feeling like you're on a roll and you keep wanting to do it and it becomes like, you get high, you get excited because you're able to knock that goal out, right? Now the next one doesn't look that bad. But when you say, I need to go work out the gym, you, I'll tell you right now, most people think they have to be in shape already to go work out the gym because they want to show up and you know, right, look out of shape, you know what I'm saying? So that's how you do it. You break it down, reverse it, and you're back to smaller steps and do it. Do you incorporate that in the training of Absolutely. agents? Absolutely. How? Here's an example on real estate. I'm sitting down with an agent, and, this, and I said, what's your goal? I want to make $100,000 this year, okay? I'm like, great. What's your average commission per transaction? $5,000. All right, so if you want to make $100,000, you have to close 20 transactions. Are you following me with the math? Because it's $5,000 commission per transaction, right? That they're going to get the key. Yep. You have to have 20 transactions. So I'm reverse engineer back now, right? To close 20 transactions, what's your uh, conversion ratio when you sit down with somebody and they sign with you and you actually close? Whatever they tell me, I go less because you want to under budget so that you can overachieve. So they'll tell me, hey, 90% or something, I'll say 75%. That means you have four people on the contract, you're gonna close three of them, okay? One's gonna fall through, whatever it might be. Dad shows up in the final walkthrough and doesn't like it, the deal is dead. I don't know what happened, right? There is some way it's not gonna happen every time. So let's call it 75. Whatever the math is of that, that's 33, I think. 33 contracts you need to have to close 20 transactions, right? To get 33 contracts, how many meet appointment do you need to set to get there? Kept appointment, okay? So they'll say, hey, every three people I meet, two will sign with me, okay? That's good. How about a load at the 50%? That means you need 66 kept meetings, okay? 66 meetings to get 33 contracts to close 20 transactions. At 5,000, 100,000, you still following me, okay? To get 33, to, to get 66 appointment, what is your cancellation rate or reschedule rate? Okay, whatever that is, I did the math, so that means you might need 80 appointments, okay? To get 80 appointments, how many people do you need to be communicating, we call them engaging, that might want to meet with you, okay? So whatever that number is, you reverse engineer, and then to get that many engaged with you, how many people you have to touch, okay? Which means you send out a bunch of emails, send a bunch of people, and then people text you back, go, hey, I might be looking to buy a house, or my cousin looking to buy a house, that's engagement, right? And now the touches. So we work the math out, and it ended up being like, how many thousand touches? But if you break it down now, so then I go to the next thing. I'm breaking down to smaller steps, right? How many vacations do you want to take a week, you want to take a year? You, in the real estate industry, they might say two, four. I'm like, guess what? I'll give you eight. Take eight weeks vacation. So 52 minus eight, you got 44 weeks still, okay? After 44 weeks, you divide it out, how many days you want to work a week? They said six days, seven days a week. I'm like, five days. Take two days off to hang out with your kids. Now, I divide that, I backed it up. Now, it looks like this is how many touches you need to do a day. I think it's like five to seven. Send out five texts or seven texts or whatever you got to do every day, okay? From there, it should turn into this number of engagement. From this engagement, you block off time for your engagement because you block off time your day for touches. You block off time your day for engagement. Of the engagement, you're going to set appointments. Of the appointment, you got to go see them, block off that much time for appointment, okay? And you get them to sign a contract with you. Now you got to block off this much time to do showings so or to go to listing presentation, whatever it might be. Block off this time. Before you know it, that's only 15 hours a week of work. What the heck have you been doing for the rest of the time? You know? <laughs> so that's an example of reverse engineer back to smaller steps. Does that make sense? And if you enjoyed this clip, watch the full episode right up here.